My name is Francis Ratniex. I'm Professor of Apiculture at the University of Sussex and Head of LASI, the Laboratory of Apiculture and Social Insects. This video is about a project we've just completed in which we have decoded honeybee waggle dances to understand where in the landscape the bees are foraging and in particular how the distance at which they forage changes month by month and season by season. This project was carried out by two postdoctoral researchers in my laboratory and myself. One of these was Dr. Margaret Cuvion, who comes from the United States, and the other one was Dr. Roger Skirch, who comes from Switzerland. Honeybees and other pollinating insects are not as common as they used to be in Britain, and they face many challenges. One of the challenges is the food supply. Agricultural intensification has reduced the number of flowers in the countryside. There is much interest at the moment in schemes to help bees by increasing their forage, whether this is helping bees in gardens, through garden plants, or in the countryside through various schemes to encourage farmers to plant more flowers that bees can visit. But when do the bees need extra flowers to provide the pollen and nectar on which they feed? Do they need it all year round or most of the year, or just in a particular season or month? Indeed, how could we even figure this out? In this project, we're using a behavior that's unique just to the honeybees, their waggle dances, to understand where they're collecting their food. The waggle dance is a form of communication where a honeybee forager tells her nestmates where she has been collecting food. Not all foragers dance, only those that have visited the most profitable patches. So the dance is actually a kind of integrated or, or filtered form of information about food availability in the landscape. The dances are quite easy to decode and study. We video dances made by bees living in glass-walled observation hives in the laboratory. The bees can leave the lab through a tube connecting the hive to the outside. We then play back the video frame by frame on a computer to measure precisely the angle and the duration of the waggle phase. Here, one second corresponds roughly to 750 meters. This vector information is telling us where that particular dance is saying there are good patches of flowers in the surrounding areas. The waggle dance is not actually very precise to the nearest yard or meter. So we only have a very general idea where each individual bee has been foraging. So we plot each decoded dance not as a dot on the map, but as a distribution or small hill of probability showing the general location, which is about the size of a field. We can do this for many dances and so we can make an overall map showing where foraging is concentrated over any period of time, whether one month, one season, one year or indeed several years. Mapping the dances like that we can get a powerful visualization of when it is hard for the bees to find forage near the hives. Here we see some of the foraging maps we have made. The beehives are located in the center of each map in the laboratory. There are six maps, spring, summer and autumn, in two different years. You can see how in spring the foraging is close by to the laboratory usually less than one kilometer. By contrast, in the summer, foraging is at much greater distances, averaging two or three kilometers, and even as much as five or 10 kilometers. The foraging distance reduces in the autumn, but not to the degree found in the spring. Here we see the average foraging distance plotted month by month. As you can see, foraging distance increases from less than one kilometer in spring to two or three kilometers in summer on average, and then it decreases again in the autumn. In the summer, you can also see that there is a kind of hot spot of increased foraging activity, approximately two or three kilometers to the southeast. So the bees are here showing us that there's a particular location that is good for them. This season by season, month by month effect is even more striking when we compare the foraging area, which is 20 or even 50 times greater in the summer than in the spring. Bees are economically savvy or intelligent when they forage, 
And the fact that they are foraging long distances tells us that there aren't good flower sources available closer to the hive. Overall, our results show that bees find it harder to locate good flower patches in the summer than in the spring or the autumn. Well, the summer is probably better than the spring or autumn in terms of the number of days on which bees can forage because we have more warm days on which bees can be active. But that doesn't mean that there are more flowers available for the bees to forage in. In the spring, there's a huge abundance of all types of flowers which come into bloom, everything from crocuses in your garden to dandelions to all kinds of fruit trees and other trees which bloom. Flowers are really quite abundant in the spring. And in the autumn, ivy is hugely abundant. Ivy is a very important source of pollen and nectar to honeybees and other insects. And it's an extremely common plant in Britain. In the summer, flowers are scarcer because the types of habitats where flowers are very common in the summer, for example, hay meadows or unimproved pastures, have been greatly reduced in recent decades and since World War II. Another reason that summer is a difficult foraging season is almost certainly because of competition. In the summer, there are just many more insects looking for food. Honeybee colonies have more bees in them in the summer than in the spring. And bumblebee colonies are at their maximum in the summer. And so are most other insects common in the summer. The reason why we did this project in the first place is because we wanted to help bees. And I think we've done that. But the bees have really helped themselves by telling us where they forage. And from that, we can now understand how better to help them in terms of providing flowers. This project was made possible by the generosity of many donors to the Sussex Plan for Honeybee Health and Wellbeing. In particular, the Nineveh Charitable Trust, Burt's Bees, and Rouse Honey Limited. Without them, it would not have been possible. So we'd like to extend a big thank you to them and all of the donors who are making the research we're doing on honeybees possible at the University of Sussex.